Uh, my psychic story starts later than both of yours. Uh, it was about six years ago. Uh, I was talking to a cl close friend of mine um, who said that all of my problems um, were in my head and that I really needed to talk to a psychic. And I thought that was really silly. Um, I was super skeptical of anything with that kind of word, psychic, paranormal. Not just skeptical, outright dismissive, not even curious. So if you called yourself a psychic, there were only two options. Either you were delusional or you were a fraud. And maybe I'd be interested for entertainment purposes for $5, but probably not. So very like conventional Jewish atheist rational uh, uh, upper middle class Angelino type. And my friend Hannah said, you should talk to my psychic. Uh, and I said, no, it's stupid. And then she said, I'll pay for it. It's my gift to you. So I said, okay, fine. And I got on the phone with the psychic and she said a bunch of stuff that actually didn't really resonate for about 30 minutes. And at the end of it, she said, you know, you're psychic too. And I said, whatever. And she said, no, 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 really, you should train with me. And I said, no, you're just trying to get my money out of me, no. And then that was that, except it just like wouldn't go away, like a, like, a, like a little bug in my ear. And I had always assumed that I was just very perceptive. Like I could see things about people that somehow there was a relationship between the expressions on their face and how I knew about their relationship with their father or something like that. And I always knew I had that ability. I probably wouldn't have used the word intuitive, maybe just what did you say? The word you said, super smart. Or hypersensitive. Hypersensitive, something like that at best. Um, but there were a series of events that unfolded in order for the universe to scream at me, no, 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 you are, you are you just something like the word psychic, for God's sake. And where it finally broke open was one particular moment. I was at uh, Port Authority in, here, and I was going to go visit my friend in Teaneck, New Jersey, and it was Christmas Eve. And so it was totally packed, and I couldn't find where the gate was. And I was like, oh, how do I find this? I'm nervous. And this guy showed up out of the blue and stood in front of me, and he said, I will take you to your gate. I thought, okay. So I follow him. <laughs> I, fo I follow him. He, he, he was, well, I should have said, he asked me where I was going. So <laughs> I say, Teaneck, he says, I will show you to your gate. So the magic starts in a moment in this story. So, so I follow him down the escalator and he runs out in front of me to create this space between the two of us and I sensed on some level that he was projecting onto me some fear of him that I didn't have. He was a bit of a straggler and rough around the edges and there was some subtle racial dynamic in there where he was like I want this guy to feel safe and in that projection I was somehow able to tune into him and I, I really like more than I'd ever felt before felt the essence of a human being like everything else went black I disappeared and I was an awareness of this man and his whole story just came down on me that he had been a uh, drug addict and that he um, had gotten his act together um, and that now it was Christmas Eve and he had to call his mom and just like that. And I went up to my, it was like the words dropped from my mouth. And I said, um, you got to call your mom. And he said, what are you talking about? Like, what? And I was like, you have to call your mom. And he said, shit, man, my sister told me that today. And I've been thinking about all, that all day. And it's been three years. And I don't know if I can. And I could just feel this guy had like come through drug addiction and emerged on the other side, but still felt all this shame about his mom. And still hadn't had the courage to call her. And they'd had a rift. And he hadn't been able to do it yet. And she hadn't been able to do it yet. And I saw this woman, like salt and pepper hair, standing over a kitchen table crying. I don't know whether that was actually a perfect vision of his mom, but it was symbolically perfect, and it gave me the information I needed to say it again and again. And he's like, all right, I'll do it, I'll do it. And then he got really clear, and this is where he was magical, and he looked at me and he said, are you psychic? <laughs> and that was the first time I finally said yes. And like, there was this release in my body. Um, and since then, it's been an exploration.